Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. Hi. Welcome to part two. Yeah, welcome. Um, Kat, I have lots of things I want to talk about, and uh, I thought it would be fun to, like Jeopardy, give you some categories, and you get to pick, and then uh, also uh, with yours, you give me categories, and I get to pick. Okay, I love it. Great. Okay, so uh, here are my categories you get to choose from. Um, The first one here is um, gut feeling. The next one is... Fat. The next one is co creators. Mm. And the following one is spiral dynamics. Whoa, that immediately like hits all my little ding ding ding. <laughs> spiral That's what we're here for. dynamics. What the hell is that? Well, you brought spiral dynamics to the table several episodes ago. Do you remember yeah. this? I, I remember the sacred spiral and I remember sacred yeah. geometry, but spiral dynamics? Yeah, and I've heard people talk spiral dynamics in kind of different groups that I've been a part of that are like psychology based or whatever, but I've never quite understand it. But I saw this and I was like, I, I this is my gift to you, Kat. Uh, I'm a huge fan, as you guys know, of Elise Lunin. Um, and uh, this is something she, I just think she's brilliant. But this is what she shared. And my mind was blown and I want to discuss. OK, and here's what she says here. Spiral dynamics. The most useful model I found to explain the moment in time, this moment in time, I wrote about this at length in her Substack, but I want you to hear what she says here. So in last week's newsletter, I wrote about this concept of spiral dynamics, which was first created by Claire Graves, who was a contemporary of Abraham Maslow. They were friends, but whereas Maslow, we have his sort of triangle, his hierarchy of needs, Graves felt that human evolution and development had no end, that self-actualization was just sort of the beginning, and that it was an animating spiral. And then a man named Don Beck took the theory and advanced it, um, and then Ken Wilber took it up. And I wrote about it because it's the best model. All models are not perfect, but they're useful for this moment that we find ourselves in. And it argues or it sort of places all of human development on this spiral, saying that all all parts of the spiral are mostly present in us at all times. And we're all capable of the different levels of the spiral. And it's a really useful system when we see these moments where it feels like we're at the in chaos and we're breaking apart because Wilbur would argue that that's the moment where we start to transcend and include what came before, that it's sort of the birth of a new awareness, consciousness, perspective, the ability to get a little bit above this moment in time. And to that end, it's a really beautiful model. It's in my bio. Go to Substack to read the more comprehensive overview. But essentially, it starts with beige, the first, which is the animalistic, this sort of where we are when we're newborns, where we just need to get our needs met. This is about securing food, security, water, safety. Then we moved on to the purple, which is the mystical, animistic, where we understood ourselves to be in conversation with some force bigger than ourselves. And again, these continue to be present with us today in each of us. This isn't just defining a group, but some some are more present in different parts of the world at different times. Then we get into red, which is all about sort of feudal empire, protective impulses, um, this instinct to sort of be strong and powerful and protect. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of that in the world. Then we get into blue, which is the birth of of justice, order, hierarchy, religion. Um, And every single one of these states has sort of its positive side and its negative side. And the negative side is when it pushes us to the next level because we we start to create resistance, oppositional resistance to get to this next state. So that's blue, a lot of blue in the world. 
Then we get to orange, which is the birth of science, uh, this instinct to control and explain the world. This is the birth of medicine, rationalism, um, growth, economic growth. You could say that the sort of negative edge is consumerism, exploitation, endless growth, more, 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 capitalism. Then from orange, we get green, which is this idea of egalitarianism, that we're all the same, that every story matters, no life is more important than any other life. Um, and you get sort of systems like socialism um, and this desire for sort of equality at any cost. Again, all really beautiful. And this idea that sort of we can't survive orange. We can't survive all this orange and the consumerism. Um, and green has a lot of judgment, as you can imagine, about red and blue. These are all within the first tier. And what Wilbur and Beck and Graves explain about the first tier is that there's an intolerance within this first tier for all the other types. Whatever is most dominant in you feels like the only way. And what I think we're trying to get to is the second tier thinking, which is yellow. These colors are totally arbitrary, by the way, which is where we can actually get to the point where we can understand, recognize, value all of these other sort of memes. They call them memes or levels that are present in the world and present in us as needed at different times. And that we're not denying, disavowing, diminishing any of these levels that we recognize they all have their time and their place. That was the piece that I wanted us to hear right there was wow. whatever feels most dominant. Yeah. That feels like the only way. Wow. Wow. That's really cool. Hmm. I know that was a lot of detail, but um, it was interesting. It was it was a lot of detail. And, and so are, do you want my response to it or do you want to share your response to it? No, I would like to hear yours. Well, I, I feel like it's like this like blatant, <laughs> this is the same thing as the Enneagram. I know. I this too. is the same thing as Myers-Briggs. Like I this know. is the same thing <laughs> as the sacred spiral or the human blueprint or whatever that thing is. You know, it's like mm -hmm. us humans bless our hearts. Like we're so badly trying to figure it out. I know. Like we're, we we want to believe that it's a it's a personality type or it's a this. I'm a one or a nine, and then I've got an arrow of disintegration and integration and blah 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 blah. And it's like, guys, it's just it it's it's unfigure outable. I think. Yeah. And I also think it is wildly fascinating the creativity of the human spirit. Yes, how for sure. you know she mentions all these dudes and, and a couple of ladies I think in there um, I don't think there were any ladies but keep going well I feel like there was at least one and um but you know it's like it's like people over you know you look at it, it's psychology and philosophy and theology and stuff like that and you just see these at least I see these common threads and it makes me just want to go can everybody put your guns down I know man can everybody right. just at least like, I realize that there are big feelings. They're really big feelings. And, and there are ways that we've been trained and, and, and we've been raised. And, and also like, we are all just trying to figure it out, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I just, yep. I don't know that that's really, that's really, um, that's a really cool thing that you found. I, I love and And I am curious about that woman. Um, like, could she not find a quiet place to share I know. that information? <laughs> yeah. it was, I was trying to figure out where I she was. I love that you exactly. called her that woman. That woman. <laughs> uh, Kat, I, I heard a phrase that somebody just put on their Instagram this week, and I wrote it down because it reminded me of Wu Wei, um, which sometimes Sarah calls Wee Woo because that's what she calls one of yeah. her cats. Wee Woo. Um, <laughs> So you could say either, but the phrase that they said was being neutral is being free. And mm -hmm. it took me a mm -hmm. second to be yeah. like, oh, neutral's bad. You uh -huh. know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah. then I thought, I haven't looked up what the word neutral means. Maybe we need to do a deep dive there. But being neutral means being free. And I thought, yeah, because I don't know, there's a part 
of being neutral that is um what's the word is uh boring no that's true though too <laughs> I, like neutral colors please never um but I, there's a part of being neutral that i think um means that you're waving a white flag you know like yeah, you're giving like up surrender. in some way yeah. but yeah. Uh, also maybe you're just not as worried you're not putting your energy where it doesn't need to be yeah. Mm-hmm. It it reminds me of the story of the farmer that we told many, many yeah. episodes ago where it's like, it, it's basically like the less attachment that you can have to the outcome, the better, according to yeah. whoever's enlightened. And, and I think the thing that I struggle with, and I've, I've spent a lot of time, especially when I was in Colorado, I spent a lot of time thinking about this is why does that feel so to me? Why does that feel uninteresting and boring And like, not like exciting that it's like, I would, I would be able to achieve such a level of like, not caring, you know, like just being like, okay with whatever, not, and not passively, very intentionally. Like I, I am going to just trust that nature is going to move. Like one of the things that, that I wrote down on my trip is that one of the things that I find really beautiful about nature is the patience and the persistence of it. Mm. Nature is patient and it's persistent. The seasons yeah. are coming. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't not, stop them. Yeah. W- one of them or not, they're here, you know? Well, or, well, take that with real life. It's like, you know, it's so easy to go into victimhood, especially when real shit is happening, mm-hmm. like really hard mm-hmm. shit's happening. Yeah. But, you know, I find myself in those times going like, oh my God, like, when is this going to end? I, I use the phrase a lot, good or bad. I use... um something's got to give, you know? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. to your point, like seasons are going to change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like put that in the context of our lives. Like they always have, Yeah, you know, Mm -hmm. like I love that phrase where people say you've survived all of your worst days, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and so yeah, that's beautiful. It's so hard to see that in the moment though. You know, it really is. It's like, and it's, it's cause we're so close to it, I think. Mm -hmm. And, And as much as I don't want to, again, being out in the sunshine and walking, especially in the fall, walking and Mm -hmm. seeing the beauty of the different colored leaves, like there is something when you go out there that makes whatever the hard thing is a little bit lighter Mm -hmm. because you feel connected to something again. Yes. Yes. You feel, you feel, at least to me, I feel understood yeah. I feel understood when I look at the tree and I go, oh my gosh, you are having to let go. Yes. You right. are having to like really gear up for a really, really cold, quiet, dark season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And when I look at the tree in the spring and I go, oh my gosh, like you're coming to life. Like you're doing all the things. Like you're about to show your great and wonderful majesty and beauty and all of that. And then in the summertime, it's like, look, it's just party time. You know? <laughs> like it's it, to me, it's so, um, it's so lovely. And, and, and I think I heard this, one of my clients, I went to a concert last night up in Kentucky and one of my did. clients <laughs> that, that Wild. we were, that we were listening to, he said, one of the things that I think is most important for humans, and he cited several biblical, um, references to this is to be reminded that we're not alone. Yeah, mm. for sure. Yes. And it's like, if I can just look at the tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And realize I'm not alone. Like to me, that's not that terribly comforting. Like yeah. I, I, I want to have like 30 people go me too, Kat, me too, ah, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I think being out in nature is one step toward that. Mm-hmm. I really, really do. Because I feel like nature is like me too. Like, yes. we, yeah, we've yeah. been doing this for right quite a minute. Right. Um, I love this Jeopardy game. Wow. Uh, well, I can I share something real quick that is related to the Wu Wei goodness? Yeah. I've shared it before, but I'm going to share it again. Gosh darn it. It's my favorite Rumi poem, and it's it's called The Great Wagon. But there's this is just the middle verse, and it's my favorite. I have most of it memorized, but I'm going to read it. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. 
The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. Hmm. Um, if I could get any tattoo in my life, that, but I can't figure out how to make it make sense, um, it would be that field. Like anytime I'm looking for that sacred place yeah. where mm -hmm. nobody is against each other. It's been so mm -hmm. hard on social mm -hmm. media to see, yeah. you know, yeah. the fight between what's going on in Israel and mm -hmm. um, Gaza. Um, because ultimately, I don't think any of us want anyone to die, mm -hmm. you know, and it's right. like, I don't right. even know how to get involved in that conversation mm -hmm. because I, I just literally want to have a peace flag, you know, mm -hmm. but I think about that field all the time of like, how can I meet like none of that matters. It all falls away. If we can just come together and see each other as human, that we have more alike than we do different. Yeah. I, I, um, it, it makes me think Moose that when, when we get to go to Colorado together, not, yeah. not yes. if, but when we get to go together, um, we went up to um, some of the filming spots from the old western called True Grit, yeah, because um, it was it was all filmed like in that area, and and, and that's also the setting of um, the author Julie Ackeson's book Cimarron Falls is is kind of the Cimarron Mountain Range, and so we went and saw waterfalls, and we went and saw meadows, and we went and saw mountains, and we mm. you know we kind of so cool. I really wanted to like feel and see in in like real life like what was described in the book, mm -hmm. and. One of the places that that we went was called Deb's Meadow, mm. and it's this meadow that's right at about ten thousand feet, wow. and it's where one of the scenes from the movie True Grit was shot. and And this really big mountain in the background called Chimney Rock um, is kind of like the the focal point in the background. But then there's this like meadow that's probably like six or seven acres of just like wide open space. It's mm -hmm. really beautiful, and I literally couldn't not stop and just sit down mm -hmm. and put my hands on the earth. Yeah, so exactly. Cool. It was I like had calling to just you sit there. there. It was, it's like, I had to just sit there and really ground and go like, okay, like, and it, it, it's neat to me that, that we talked about like meeting in that field, like meeting mm -hmm. in that meadow, mm -hmm. meeting in that mm -hmm. place. And, and I feel like I sat in a version of that place and I would love to do yeah. that with you. That's so Oh cool. my gosh. Let's me do too. It. I want to like redo that whole trip. In uh, however former fashion it would be for us, because I think the trip that you just went on was was especially made for you and your friends. But I would love to do that um, yeah. again. I really can't wait. Me too. Me too. I would love that. I would too. And that book, like I just finished. I know we've talked about it before. I, I just finished editing and producing it, and we've submitted it, and it's all going to be available on audiobook soon. Um, but I mean, because I've gone through that that yeah. book probably four or five times like I cannot wait to see the landscape out there yeah it's gonna I be know. amazing and the book is amazing guys so yeah I'd love to share an excerpt from the book with you guys if you'd be willing yes yeah great prologue Lauren had the feeling she was being watched she stopped and concentrated on the woods between the trail and the stream the early morning sunlight filtered through the pines and dusty rays a hummingbird fluttered, suspended above delicate lupin petals. A marmot darted past her line of vision. A hawk screeched and circled overhead. In a forest so full of life, she knew there were any number of creatures who could be watching her, much more threatened by her presence than she of theirs. She resumed hiking, shaking off her paranoia. It was then that Lauren realized she felt joy for the first time in as long as she could remember. Lauren felt at peace, free even. The relationship she had ended the night before had overstayed its welcome by a year, maybe more if she was honest. She reached the top of the falls as the trail broke through a cluster of conifer trees and opened into a clearing. Picking her way alongside a narrow creek with a makeshift walking stick, she sat as close to the edge of the waterfall as possible. This had been Lauren's morning ritual for three days in a row now. She reveled in the adrenaline that surged through her body. The misty spray on her face was like a natural facial and the roar of the falls drowned out every anxious thought that tried to form in her mind. She closed her eyes and leaned her head back, face toward the sky, 
soaking in the feeling of bliss. In a split second, she was on her back. A thick arm was around her neck, restraining her from behind. Lauren screamed and struggled, but the man easily snapped her neck. She was dead when he raped her and threw her body over Cimarron Falls. Cimarron Falls. Coming out on audiobooks soon. Mm-hmm. Are we still playing Jeopardy? Yeah. Cat, give me some categories. Okay, I will give you some categories. Um category. Get it? Category. Category. <laughs> we need another t-shirt. <laughs> um category one, dirty water. Oh. Category two, cows. Okay. Category three poetry i mean come on you're like speaking my language but i'm gonna i'm gonna go a different direction you would guess i would choose poetry but i'm gonna go with dirty water dirty water okay Mm. so um in the area of colorado where we were and everybody who's tired of hearing about colorado i'm so sorry but it was just so magical Mm. and and i think everybody should experience this um they're um the indigenous tribes of that area they're called the ute the Mm -hmm. ute uh, tribes and um they have a word that means either dirty water or colorful water which to me is a very interesting framing (laughs) you know depending on the perspective one person thinks it looks dirty the other person thinks it looks pretty i picture somebody saying can i drink this yeah it's just colorful water yeah. <laughs> and then somebody going, can I drink this? No, this is dirty <laughs> no, 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 no. water. <laughs> um, and and what, what this word that I'm about to share describes is it describes the waters that trickle down from the mountains and the waters are containing so many minerals you know, lithium and sodium and magnesium and, and all the, you know, coal and all of that kind of stuff. Um, the waters that trickle down from the mountains are different colors because of the different minerals Mm. that they have absorbed as Mm. they, as the snow is melting and they're coming down the mountains. Mm. And so the word that is used to describe either dirty water or colorful water is called uncompagre. Mm. Oh, that's so is that cool. where that's the Uncompadre National Forest? That's amazing. Yes, yes. So it's in the San Juan Mountains. Oh, so wow. the part of where we were is a part of the Uncompadre Forest, National forest. And, and, that's and it's a it's a huge like it's it's miles and miles and miles big and long mm. and it's a whole mountain range and a whole like area. Mm-hmm. Um, and every time I would hear the word Uncompadre, it just did something in my that's spirit. Cool. I really love cool. that. Yeah. I love how certain words roll off of your tongue and make you mm-hmm. feel. I love that cat. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see on the side of the mountains when Sarah and I took that trip this summer, we saw a lot of like open springs where people would like bring their milk jugs and fill up with like spring water. Natural did you see that there? Water. No, if, if I saw it, I didn't know that's what I was saying. Huh. Hmm. It's it so cool. cool. I was like. Oh, just go get your water there. And it's just coming. I mean, like it's completely untouched by man Mm -hmm. other than man screwing with the ozone layer. You know what I mean? It's like the snow, like, I mean, even in the summer times, like those mountaintops are covered in snow and it's like, as the temperature fluctuates, it melts and it comes down the mountain. I mean, how pure and beautiful. You're not worried there's like moose poop in there or anything? I mean, there probably is, but like, I probably need a little moose poop in my life. It's served me well so far. (sighs) Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's the other things like in the bottles that say they're from certain springs. I'm like, I don't know if that really even exists. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Hmm. You know, like they say the Fiji water is from like the Fiji aquifers in the depths of Jakarta or wherever it is. Jakarta? (laughs) It's funny because I saw a post recently. I should have saved it and maybe I did, but I don't have it ready now. Um, the, the different, you know how different water bottles have different color lids, like a lid might be like white or clearish and blue or black. And apparently the lids mean what kind of, like it's a spring water, it's really manufactured, it's whatever. Yeah. Huh. 
Maybe yeah, there's that. one that is um, dirty water or colorful Uncompagre. water. Uncompagre. Uncompagre. <laughs> like, I would like to call you Professor Sarah. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Do you have a category, Sarah, that you would like to share? Okay, I do. I have two categories. I've got okay. Kevin James Thor- Thornton. For 500. Or <laughs> West Side School Pep Talk from Kindergartners. This is double jeopardy, Cat. Which one will you choose? <laughs> Okay, like I I am all about I'm all about the religious trauma, so I feel like I have to pick Kevin James Thornton. Okay, let's do it. Okay. This has nothing to do with religious trauma, but it has everything to do with the fact that you recently went to the dentist. And <laughs> oh. uh oh. I do want to hear about that, but first you need to hear this. And this is for you and everybody else that wants to be a part. Ready? Yes. Yeah. Recently I had to have a tooth pulled and then they did a bone graft and the dentist kept saying they were using cadaver bone. So then of course I was like, I'm just curious, is it the bone from one specific person or is it like a mixture of people? And then the room got really awkward and the dentist in a really serious tone was like, we're not allowed to disclose that information. Oh my and I was gosh. Like, I'm not going to try and go hunt down their families or something and uh but now i can't stop thinking about the person living in my face and i sense that her name is tammy (laughs) and uh, now my face is haunted and that's the story of tammy the face ghost <laughs> Tammy, ah, the he is so funny. Cuts. That is so so good. <laughs> Kat, what did you have done? Did you have oh. a face ghost implanted? Oh my god! No, <laughs> Lord, I, maybe, what is happening? Maybe. Can somebody send us some good energy? Damn it! <laughs> we're, no. we're, we're poor. We yeah, we, we're poor. we we don't we have, any cars. have medical bills. We don't have any engines. <laughs> my brother's dead. It's not okay, guys. Yeah, yeah, we are having a hard time. What is this season? I yeah, don't know. <laughs> it, it. Let's ask the tree. <laughs> what season are we in, tree? Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this is according to you, the season. dark season. <laughs> the yeah, dark. yeah. Well, the, the tree just told me it's it's tornado season. So oh, that's well, fantastic. Good. Thank you. It, none of this feels great. Or yeah, none of it. None of it feels good. Um, uh, what was the question? So you had some dental work. Oh, I, I did. Yes. I, yeah. I had some dental work. I, so, you know, a couple of months ago, well, a few months ago I had cataract surgery that really <laughs> screwed with my vision for like six months and my vision has not been right since. And it just is so frustrating. And then secondly, I went in for a very routine filling and ended up having an emergency tooth extraction that oh made gosh. me come home and cry my face oh. off because it was so traumatic. Uh. And then I had a crown build up. This is just last week. I had a crown build up and a crown put on one of my teeth. Super routine. I've got crowns on like 36 of my 33 <laughs> teeth. Okay. And like, I only have so many left in my head. And um, you have a lot so, of ghosts in there, by the way. <laughs> I've got a lot of ghosts in there. And so, um, and so anyway, so my tooth started really hurting the last half of my trip. And I was really just trying to make it till I got home. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't want to have some emergency Mm-mm. tooth thing in a mountain village in Colorado. Like that just doesn't seem like a good idea. And so, um, so anyway, so I came home and my dentist looked at my teeth and he was like, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to have a root canal. And I was yeah. like, Oh God. Jeez. And so, um, I went in this past week and I had a root canal on tooth number 12, right over oh, here. God, number 12. Um, and it was so traumatic. I felt like, so bad. Cause I was like, I've had one. It's not that bad. And you were like, fine. I've had one too. It yeah. was, it was, I mean, I'm sure it could have been so much worse, but, but the endodontist said, he goes, I just want you to know I have used buckets of anesthetic on you and he said your body just metabolizes this anesthetic so fast Mm. that I can't get the work done while you're still numb and so it's like and so he basically was like we're going to close things up you're going to have to come back in two weeks and we're going to have to finish this up and I said look I said I'd 
I don't know that I will come back. Like I will let my face explode right. before I come back to this office. <laughs> and he was like, Kat, he's like, we've got about five more percent to go. And he's like, but you're going to feel it. He's like, you're, you're just going to feel it. That he's is like, awful. It that's was when, awful. That's when you Holy text shit. your friend and say, has the trash come? Bring me the crack pipe. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. But I mean, I was white knuckling it on the side of that chair. Oh my gosh. They could give you that. anything else? I mean, they gave me everything they wow. could. They, Did they you had have gas? I had no. gas. I had anesthetic. Wow. That poor nurse, I think she was turning the gas up a little bit too high yeah. just to help me out because, oh, like, it her. was really, really oh, rough. I'm so sorry. And, um, Were and, you, like, waving to tell him this hurts? Did oh, you I was know? kicking my feet. My oh, feet. My like, I was just oh. kicking my feet. And, um, and it, but, but anyway, I got through it and it's been four days now and I'm still, I'm still in a lot of discomfort Man, in, I'm in so sorry. my face. Yeah. It hurts up in there. Yeah. It hurts mean. up in here. Yeah. And he tells me that that's normal and, um, gave me all kinds of like opioids and stuff like that, which Great. I haven't taken. Oh. Don't take, um, okay. yeah, yeah, I don't, don't do I don't want to have one more thing to be addicted to. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, <laughs> thanks for asking. <laughs> thanks for asking about my latest medical trauma. <laughs> It's been amazing. God, you should have just stuck your tooth underneath that colorful water out there in Colorado. Ah! Would have healed it right up. It, I should have just dunked my head in the hot springs right next to the gonads. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Oh, well, gosh. Now this gives this leads me to my second topic, <laughs> which will help be a nice cap on top. I came across this this uh, Instagram post that that encouraged me to call this phone number and said, you won't regret it. And oh. it is a school called, um, 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 West side elementary school in Healdsburg, California. I've heard about this. And it's a class of kindergartners from what I understand that, uh, they're doing a, a project. And so if you call this phone number, you'll get a pep talk from a kindergartner and I oh. haven't called it, but I wanted to do it with you guys. Would you be open? Oh my God. Let's please. Let's do it. I would That's love fun. encouragement from a five-year-old. I'm celebrating my nephew Caden's birthday this weekend. Mm-hmm. And I am so excited to experience his five-year-old energy. Yay. Like, like I, I just, I need it. And so this is a great precursor. Please bring it. Okay, great. And also just in case the phone number is 707-873-7862. Okay. And here we go. Here we go. Hi, welcome to Pep Talk, a public art project by Westside School. Please listen to the following options for encouraging messages. If you're feeling mad, frustrated, or nervous, press 1. If you need a word of encouragement and life advice, press 2. If you need a Pep Talk from kindergartners, press 3. If you need to hear kids laughing with delight, press 4. To hear how awesome you look, press six. Oh, six, 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 six. Press seven. To donate, press zero. Six. Lady, you're doing great. Rainbows are jealous of you. No, you're looking great. (laughs) To donate, to keep the hot. (laughs) Rainbows are jealous of you. Oh my, I thought she said Rambo is jealous of you. Well, either one. I mean, like if Rambo's jealous of me or if rainbows are jealous of me, either one, I am feeling so so good about myself. Wow. I really encourage you guys to call that number again, (laughs) 707-873-7862. There are several options. Apparently there are, there are. Yeah. I also have another phone number. I would encourage you to call the cat and moose hotline guys. We are tired of this, not being a conversation. Speak back to us. If something happened in the past two, eight, nine, 10 episodes that you want to talk about, (laughs) give us a call. 1-866-KATMOO5. That's right. You can also text that number if you'd like. You can send anything. Well, not anything. Be gentle. Kat, do you want to hear my category called fat? I I, I'm, I have been over here just embodying that category. And so I very much have been waiting, waiting to hear your category of fat. It's sort of like a pep talk, like what we just got. Uh, okay. I ran across this artist. Her name is Kate Yeager. I think that's how you say it. I've just been introduced to her. But she has a song called Fat. And Mm, I want to encourage you guys. uh, It's not a bad thing at all. Um, 
In fact, it was very inspiring to me. So I'm going to let you guys hear a bit of it. Here we go. Oh, I love her already. I do too. She's wearing a bikini. I was 12 and a half. The first time a boy called me fat. We were at a dance. My hair was down. Jason came and asked me out as a joke and all his good friends laughed I wonder if he ever thinks about that Didn't know how to hate myself Till I learned it from someone else Didn't see what was wrong with me Just live not give you chills oh it just it just absolutely stirs my soul and i hate that i'm distracted by all of her guitar plugins me and her too mike they're in the pool uh, well, oh, i think they're on the other side of the pool right but i'm right. very nervous about her legs being in the yeah, water yeah and she's like oh she's my, about to be involved kill herself die. being this vulnerable yeah oh okay God. well i'm glad i paused it yes i was getting <laughs> nervous and trying to listen and she's sitting on the edge of a pool oh my yeah. god all i heard, heard was her like, beautiful voice and y'all are panicked that she's gonna electrocute herself apparently it's happened enough time is that church baptisms <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I love you guys. This has been so fun. Kat, do you have any other categories you want to cover? Categories. Um, I, w- I would like to, I would like, in Moose, like, this is just for you because I know you love poetry, but I wrote a poem, like, <gasps> literally, like, it, it's very, very short. It's Great. just one line. I haven't expanded it. Beautiful. But, but when I was, um, when I was around Deb's Meadow and going to see Chimney Rock and all of that, um, I was really moved by the aspen trees. Mm. I do not know aspen trees. Like I've I heard so of aspen trees. Share. And when I think of aspen trees, I think of Christmas trees. And then aspen trees are not Christmas trees. Mm-mm. Aspen trees are the trees that have white bark. They kind of look like birch a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and their leaves in the fall are a fiery, vibrant yellow. Like, like, and I, I've, I took pictures that we can post if you want. Um, but I was so moved by the uniqueness of these aspen trees. And I felt like, I mean, this is going to sound so woo woo and weird, but it's like, I felt like one of them spoke to me. Oh my gosh. This is so mm-hmm. in the vein of what's happening in our lives too. Keep mm-hmm. going. So it really was beautiful to me that I feel like this, these, the, these like set of trees, I feel like they spoke to me and this is what they said. I want to be out with the aspen. White is to reflect the sun, not just absorb it. Oh, wow. wow. What does that mean to you? Um, And you don't have to share. It's like asking an, an, an artist what their song meant. You're like, right, whatever right. it means to you. <laughs> yeah. It, to me, it just means that like... At first glance, the trees just reflect the sunlight because they're white. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, the sunlight bounces off of me and and yay, blah, blah, blah. And all the other trees are dark Mm. and they just absorb the sunlight. There's a tiny bit of them that reflects it, you know, because you can see them in the sunlight. So like that's a reflection of the sun. But the white aspen trees not only are able to take in the sun, but they're also able to turn it around hmm. and push it outward. And there's something about that difference from all the other trees that just, it just felt really yeah. beautiful to me. It's like, I, it kind of made me feel like, like I can absorb God and God's goodness or spirit or whatever, you know, whatever your, your preference is. But it's like, I can absorb that and receive it. And that's all I need. Like, that's yeah. great. If I have got the wherewithal, to take the energy to turn it outward right. and share it. Like, I just, th- I think that's beautiful. I do too. I love that. 
I have something very important to share on that. When we were talking about tattoos and all that, I'm actually going to, the tattoo I want is a pine tree and an asp- a quaking aspen tree. <gasps> so oh, cool. Because quaking aspens are probably my favorite trees in the world. And oh. did you know that they are also the largest organism? Quaking aspen is made up of one all of the roots create the other trees. And so they're mm-hmm. all one organism, a forest of them. Like probably, I, th- so cool. I think I, look, I looked it up. The biggest one is called Pando and I think it's in Utah, but it's the largest living organism. Wow. Because it's just a forest of trees. That's all yeah. one and the same. It's fascinating. And it's like a, a metaphor for community, yes. right? Like, yeah. golly, that's beautiful, it's amazing. Sarah. Wow. You guys, I love that you both connect on aspen trees. I love and, aspen. And Sarah, you just said that like you were a Baptist preacher on a Sunday. <laughs> oh, well. So you, there's some energy for you around getting that no, tattoo trees, and that tree. I love trees. It's so mm-hmm. funny. We just had a friend of ours who's in Charleston. I posted, I brought that picture up a second ago. And she specifically said, this is an angel oak located outside of Charleston. It's over 400 years old. This tree is so extensive. It's amazingly beautiful and spiritual. You can feel its energy. I just placed my hand on it in a few different places. And I swear I could feel its spiritualness wow. Wow. and its wisdom. It was a really mm. moving experience. That's amazing. Wow. That's cool. Trees are amazing, guys. Trees they are really awesome. Are. Go hug a tree, guys. Hug a tree. Um, I, if you guys aren't going to panic about um, her getting electrocuted, I'd love to play the rest of the song on the way out. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Still not full yet, ten years out. Didn't know why to hate myself till I learned it from someone else. Didn't see what was wrong with me, just live. Just the same I'll always carry it in my body I'm carrying what Jason said All the comments from my mom and dad None of it was ever even mine Could've lived my whole life just fine Didn't know how to hate myself someone else didn't see what was wrong with me just lived in my body did my best to lose the weight hoping the hurt would go away but damn skinny feels just the same always Producer Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Cat and Moose is a BP production.